Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have something that I am very excited about, an interior mod for the Launch GT that I'm sure you can tell by the thumbnail and the title uh, is made of carbon fiber. So yes, that's right. We're gonna be installing some Fazer Schmiede. Fazer Schmiede. Carbon fiber paddle shifters and carbon fiber end steering wheel trim here on the Alacha GT N line. So anyways, I've always been following Fazer Schmiede on Instagram uh, ever since they started producing i30N carbon fiber interior bits for uh, this car. And I have inquired to them in the past about purchasing some parts for obviously the interior trim because most of the stuff on the inside, if not all of it, is the same. And unfortunately, they said they would not ship here to the US. So a couple months ago, I stumbled across this paddle shifters company who is basically selling uh, some of their products on their website and would ship overseas. I found out a few weeks ago that the N steering wheel paddle shifters should be compatible across all the N products. So that means the N lines with the N steering wheel as well as the N cars with the N steering wheel, obviously, all should share the same paddle shifter mechanism. So after knowing this, it was perfect timing. I went ahead and picked up Fazer Schmied's i30N carbon fiber paddle shifters as well as the end steering wheel trim. Now, I'm not 100% sure that bottom end trim is the same, um, but from my research, I think it is. So I went ahead and bought both, took a chance. So I'm gonna do my best in today's video to show you an in-depth process of how to install the carbon fiber paddle shifters as well as the carbon fiber steering wheel trim here on the end steering wheels. Now, if you guys wanna support this channel and this video, please use the link in the description to purchase these two products from the Paddle Shifters website. Now, by clicking that link below, you guys should receive a small discount on the website. If not, use Justin K in the coupon code box at checkout. And I also receive a small commission in exchange for you guys using that affiliate link. Now, I was told by the owner of this website that they will be carrying the Fazersmead dash trim as well in carbon fiber here in the future. So I'm hoping by you guys using that affiliate link down in the description below that I can earn some credit towards that dash trim. And again, show you guys how to install it here on the Launcher GT. So here are the Fazersmead parts. I know it's a little underwhelming, but uh, I promise once you see what's inside, it's top notch stuff. So. Here we have the lower steering wheel trim, first of all. Extremely light because this is a true carbon fiber part all the way through. So this is like an autoclave part. I believe it's like molded in carbon fiber and everything, injected. But I mean, you can see by the quality of this part, of course it's stamped in the back for authenticity. I mean, it is just a very high quality part. I'd give these things like a 98, 99% finish. I mean, the carbon fiber is just perfect on this thing. And moving on to the paddle shifters here, they come individually wrapped, which is nice. And these are also a true carbon fiber part. These are not overlaid at all. But here's the right paddle. I chose the white lettering. You can get white, red, and blue, I believe, but you can see the thing is just immaculate here on the back side. I mean, it is just perfect. And I chose these mainly because they retain the lip that your fingers will hold on the back side. Now I know some of the other on the market might not retain that shape or as much as these do from what I've seen in pictures. So that is kind of the reason I chose these. And I just also like the OEM plus looking shape too. So uh, I believe these are a little bit larger than the stock ones, but I guess we'll find out in this video. But uh, overall, the quality on these things is very, very good. So after doing a little bit of research online, obviously I knew we would have to remove the airbag and the steering wheel. So first thing you wanna do is obviously disconnect the negative terminal here on the battery. Let the battery drain down so there's no uh, energy left in the system to ignite the airbag that you will be removing from the car. So let's go ahead and do that really quick and then we'll jump inside the vehicle. Now I'm gonna try to make this long story short. Um, I believe these paddle shifters are the same exact ones just in a different finish as the current NDCT models. Same shape, same size and everything like that. Um, the new ones are just silver, these are dark gray. This trim piece, I am not 100% sure it's the same as the N cars because uh, as I've seen from a couple N steering wheel removals, this trim piece bolts onto the back of the two little N buttons. Now I'm hoping 
it's just an illusion and that like these controls are farther down than the end cars are um, and everything like that because knowing how Hyundai reuses parts in their parts bin I'm just hoping this piece is the same um, obviously it screws on behind here somewhere I'm assuming like right here behind this on either side and there's also two little screws on the back side right here that you can see um, from the back side of the wheel that also holds this piece in along with this uh, plastic shroud on the back side of the steering wheel uh, so long story short I'm not a hundred percent sure if we need to take the wheel off but uh, I've been told that I will need to remove the steering wheel from the car to access these two upper pieces that hold the silver trim in the end logo once this piece comes off is held on by a single screw on the back side and the paddle shifters we will need to transfer the um, I guess OEM mechanism that they bolt onto onto the carbon fiber ones but I believe that's a simple one single screw for each one and it's really not a hard job so to remove the airbag on the steering wheel you want to turn the wheel 90 degrees off center in either direction now there's going to be a little tab behind the steering wheel here that you can fit a flathead screwdriver into you want to insert it in there towards the top and pry downwards and it should release the steering wheel airbag um, and it is spring loaded so it should come off pretty simple if you have the tab pulled down correctly and at the bottom of the steering wheel there is a little pinhole um, I'm going to use an allen wrench and I believe you just press in and it should be the last third pin and release the airbag so hopefully you guys can see get an idea of what everything looks like so on the back side of the airbag here, it's pretty simple. There's a little horn connector here. You can just pull that straight off. And the two airbag connectors. Now these are color coordinated, so no worries about mixing them up or anything. On each connector, there's an orange tab on either side. You want to ideally pull those up at the same time using like two flathead screwdrivers and then lift them up simultaneously. Once you get those off, you should be free to remove the airbag and uh, gain access to the back side of the steering wheel. I want to give you guys an in-depth look since that was not something that I saw online. It's honestly not as bad as I thought it was going to be going into this. It's really not that bad at all. Uh, but here we are inside the steering wheel. Obviously this is the main steering wheel nut that you will need to remove if we need to remove the steering wheel. There are a couple promising signs that I'm going to point out here in a second. So here we are to the left. I believe these are the screws we need to remove to remove the entire paddle shifter assembly. So there's one here and there's one right over here. Now what we can also gain access to inside the steering wheel is obviously the connection to I think through the clock spring. Obviously here's the airbag stuff and here's the horn button. Um, but here is the trim piece that you were going to be replacing. Now like I thought um, the screw you can feel it is right here on the back side of the control panel now let's go ahead and start with the paddle shifters because the, that's something I know we can do um, pretty easily so let's go ahead and undo these two screws get those off and uh, go ahead and swap over the components for the carbon fiber ones so just took that screw out it kind of pried out from the back side and here's what comes out so I'll go ahead and disconnect this connector here and I believe it's just this one screw right under that sticker that allows you to take the paddle off of this mechanism and uh, we can go ahead and swap it over to the new one. So I've gotten everything swapped over here. Um, basically everything will be on this one like it comes out of the factory. So you want to remove that one screw like I said um, right behind this sticker. Pry around the edges this will pop off pretty easily uh, with the plug and the buttons and everything. So you want to go ahead and set that aside. Now, once you get to this point, I was a little confused as to how this came apart. Obviously, there's this tab here that you want to pry back a little bit, but I'm like, okay, this is not working. Um, this is not coming apart. Basically, there's this little pin right here, right there. You want to basically pry that out, or what's easier is to push from the bottom side. So one side's keyed. You can see right there, one side's keyed. So basically just take a small pin, push that pin through, this side will start coming out, just pull it all the way out, it's just a little plastic pin. Once you get that out, um, this whole assembly, it is a little spring loaded, there's a small spring behind this because you can see functions like a paddle shifter. Um, it's not very strong, there's not a lot of tension or anything, you just want to be careful. Pry this back a little bit, 
this whole thing will pop off. Then you'll be left with like this. Now here, this little yellow uh, bumper thing goes against these buttons. So you wanna be sure that goes in back in the correct orientation and it should look just like that. Basically flat side up, pretty simple there. So here is the underside of the paddle. Now they did a pretty good job of mimicking this here. You can see how the pin slides through those two holes, how everything aligns spring sits in that little circle. I did go ahead and grease the spots that were greased on this one, just so everything is very well lubricated and uh, hopefully functions uh, like OEM. The one problem I did have on this paddle shifter, uh, so you can see here, this sits just like that. I did have some rubbing on either side of this plastic OEM assembly, so I had to file down the edges right here and right there. Uh, basically so it wasn't rubbing anymore. That allows it to hopefully not stick. Um, I think I got everything actuating like I want it. I'll probably go ahead and do another once over after I film this clip. Okay, so I did have to end up taking the steering wheel off. Um, I could get to most of the bolts behind through the paddle shifter holes while it was on the car. It was really just a pain in the butt to get to, but if you have one of those really small uh, 90 degree ratchets that come in these kits like this uh, with some bits uh, you can definitely do it however here is what I was kind of worried about here is the trim piece off the end line and uh, you can tell it is a little bit different um, that's because the two wiring harnesses actually run through those little rectangular sections right here and then plug into the back of the two controls on the wheel. And exactly what I was afraid of, it's not the same piece. So here is the carbon fiber piece all lined up. I'm just holding it with my hand here. Controls in place and yeah. Um, you can tell the shape is extremely close. I mean, it almost goes all the way. And uh, exactly what I was afraid of earlier in this video the bolting location is in a totally different spot because that is exactly where the N uh, button would go on the N steering wheels. I guess that's a confirmation that these will not fit the N line steering wheels um, because, well, mainly due to the fact that there's no N button there and uh, the part is very slightly different. So here we are in the next day and I've already started editing this video and I realize we are over 12 minutes long. So I'm gonna try to be quick, wrap this video up, just give you my impressions and thoughts going into this install. So as you can see here, I did go ahead and proceed with installing the carbon fiber paddle shifters. And I would say I'm glad I did because I still think they add quite a bit of character to the steering wheel itself. And uh, hopefully we can add some carbon fiber dash trim here in the future go ahead and accent these pieces because I think that would look really sick. Um, I'm kind of a little concerned how that would look all glossy carbon, um, just in terms of the light reflection and stuff coming in here from the window. But I definitely do want to try it and uh, see how it looks, and I think this uh, would accent really nicely. So now that we know that the lower trim piece is not a direct replacement between the N and the N line cars, I do have some thoughts on that. So after reviewing the footage uh, from what I've took, the pieces seem to be extremely close in overall shape. And if you notice on the um, carbon fiber one, they actually use adhesive to glue the mounts onto the back of the carbon fiber part. Wait a second, if the parts are actually just the same shape and they forge the carbon one anyway and they just go ahead and basically glue on new mounts, in theory you might be able to just create new mounts for the top brackets to fit the end line cars and use the exact same carbon fiber part just glue a different mount on top. So that was my thinking there, that it might be possible for them to just create new top mounts and glue them on you know, in a different way, rather than having to create a new carbon fiber piece. So now it might not be 100% the same, and of course they would have to probably try to fit it themselves on an endline steering wheel over on uh, Europe and everything like that. Um, but I definitely think it's a possibility that um, they could very well have reused the same part. And I definitely will reach out to them to see if maybe they can R&D um, a new carbon fiber piece 
and uh, see if it would work. Now, knowing what I know now after doing the install process myself, I would have definitely appreciated somebody having a video like this out there for me to follow along with the transferring of the paddle shifters from the OEM to the carbon fiber ones because it is not necessarily a hard process at all and actually I would think it's a very good DIY project but it's one that I would have liked to have a little bit of direction going into uh, knowing what I'm getting into. So hopefully you guys find this video helpful in doing this uh, install if you guys decide to go ahead and do it because um, I think knowing what I know now this is probably a, a 90 minute install process so given that these are custom carbon fiber parts that i assume are assembled by hand they did need a little bit of work to get them to fit 100 percent properly so like i showed earlier in this video the left hand side one needed a little bit of uh, filing down on that long rectangular piece so it didn't rub on the oem plastic assembly when moving up and down now here on the right side paddle shifter I had to file down some of the extra adhesive that had bubbled up through the uh, plastic mounts that they adhere to the paddle shifter itself. So basically once I got rid of that extra adhesive that had uh, formed on top of the mount, this one didn't require any additional filing to get it to function properly and it was basically uh, five minutes of me getting rid of that a little adhesive layer and it functioned perfectly after installing everything. Now, not that I was expecting to have to do that work, but I totally understand now, seeing how these parts are made, that that may be required in uh, installing these paddle shifters. So I think that pretty much wraps up my thoughts on this install. I would 100% recommend doing the paddle shifters, um, even without the lower trim piece here on the end line, if you guys are looking for either carbon fiber paddle shifters or larger paddle shifters for your end line, because these are substantially larger but they're not too large. They look great. They add a ton of character to the steering wheel. It is something you look at a lot more than you think um, being behind the wheel of the car. So I think it is something that is very nice. And like I said, I like those little extra lips on the back that you can grab your fingers onto. So hopefully you found this video helpful in doing whatever install you are on your end steering wheel. It's definitely a video I wish was out there before I went into this project. Um, so hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did and plan on buying any of these parts, please use that affiliate link down in the description below. It definitely helps me out and uh, supports this video for taking the time to create it. So uh, I definitely appreciate that. Once again, please hit that like button. Leave any questions, comments, or anything you want to say in the comment section below. I read every single one of them. And as always, we'll see you guys in the next one.